saints in long stare All across the Hi, I'm Yuha and I'm a hockey player here at USC. I will be going through some fixed concepts and examples with you this semester. And remember, just like on the ice, there's no such thing as luck in physics. Just keep your head up and work hard. As I promised, here's an example of how we can use these integration formulas to our advantage when we're trying to find velocity and position when we know our acceleration. So in this example, we'll consider a simple case that the acceleration is constant, so it doesn't depend on time. And we'll start by evaluating what is the velocity in that case. So v0 is just the initial velocity, and now that the a acceleration is constant, we can take it outside the integral, because we are integrating over time. So we have simply a that doesn't depend on time, t0, t, dt. Now, simply becomes substitution into t. And t minus, so that's t. Like this. And uh, always in integration we need limits or initial conditions. So in this case, we had our limits. But for convenience, we usually define the t0 to be 0. So we start counting our time from 0 seconds, if you will. And uh, in that case, we can just, well, that, that goes away. And we get v0 plus a t, which is one of the results that were shown in the compiled collection of equations for one directional motion or motion in 1D. So this looks familiar and uh, <clears throat> now that we know what the velocity as a function of time is, we can use the other integration formula for position to evaluate what is our position as a function of time in the case when acceleration is constant. So x0 plus the integral t0 to t and then the whole thing that we just got v0 plus a t dt and uh, both these terms depend on time or no well this is constant and that depends on time but what I'm trying to say that nothing com comes out of the integral. So we have t0, t, integrating v0, which is constant, that becomes v0 times t, and then the at term, so half times t squared times a. So half times a t squared. And as you can see, this looks somewhat familiar already. And uh, we knew that our t0 is 0, so the substitution becomes even simpler. So we have x0 plus only the upper limit v0 t plus half times a t squared. And this is one of the uh, formulas in our compilation that I showed you earlier. So like you, like you can see they come from the integration of velocity and acceleration to start with. And this is the uh, general method for calculating velocity and position when we know acceleration. It doesn't have to be constant. In our case, it was a constant just to keep things simple, but it could be any kind of function depending on time. The only difference is in this step the acceleration in a more complicated situation doesn't come out of the integral. So then you have to use your knowledge of calculus. How do you deal, deal with that? Oh, oh.